everyone, it's Laurel here, and I'm here with a video to showcase two of the cards I made from yesterday's video. I received a lot of comments about uh, making some of the samples from the cards, so I'm choosing these two to make today, and then I'll make the other ones in some other videos. So I'll be linking to the video I made yesterday in case you missed it, but these are the two cards from yesterday's video. The one on the right that I'm pointing to uses the ink tints colored pencils, and the one to the left is actually using Distress Ink refills. So I'm going to make cards very similar to that, but I'm going to make birthday cards this time. And I'm going to be using this Happy Everyday stamp set from Simon Says Stamps. So the layout's going to be the same. I just chose a different stamp so I can have a variety of stamps on or cards on him when I need them. So anyway, so these are the two that I'm making for today's video. And again, the other cards that I made using other watercolor mediums, I'll make in separate videos. So I'm going to mount this uh, stamp onto my, that's a Martha Stewart fitted press. And I'm going to go ahead and prep these two cards here, doing the exact same thing. I'm using some Versafine Onyx Black ink. It's a great pigment ink. It gives really crisp impressions when you stamp sentiments. I use this most of the time for most of my sentiments because of the clear, crisp image it leaves behind. But this is also great because it's a pigment ink. It stays wet a little bit longer, so I'm able to actually heat emboss that as well with uh, by omitting the using the Versamark, I can use this pigment ink, and I'll show you what I mean in just a minute. So I'm centering that up, just eyeballing it, and I'm going to stamp both of these down on the center of some watercolor cardstock. This is actually watercolor cardstock I picked up from the the kit aisle at Target. It's 140 pound cards or watercolor paper. I just grabbed it and trimmed it down. The It's four by five and a quarter, I believe is what I've trimmed it down to. I'm not sure. I'll give you the final measurements when I'm done. But uh, anyway, so I've gone ahead and stamped those with the Versafine ink, and then this is just clear embossing powder. This is Hero Arts clear embossing powder. And I keep it in these little Tupperwares that I got from Target or wherever, you can get them anywhere. And I use clear the most, so I put it in a large one. And that little clip thing on the front is actually a cable clip. Got the idea by Jennifer McGuire. I'll link to what I use. Uh, and that's just great for storing my spoons, not in the powder, because. I get powder everywhere. I'm using a piece of scratch. You caught me. <laughs> I'm using a piece I messed up on the back side, but that's okay. Nobody will ever know the difference because I'm adhering this panel down to a card base. So I'm able to use the other side of this watercolor paper from the boo-boo I made on the other side. So just forget you ever saw that. So this is my heat gun I'm using, and you can see how quickly uh, the clear embossing powder melts onto that ink there and that just gives you a great heat embossed image. I do heat embossing pretty much any time I do any kind of watercoloring because it keeps the images very crisp and sometimes if you watercolor over ink it dulls out the color. So I've got both of these uh, preps prepped and ready to go. So the first card I'm going to do is using the Ink Tense watercolor pencils and this is the card we'll be making today. It's a lot more vibrant than yesterday's card but I wanted to show you the difference just by applying more pencil down to your card base, you can get a really bright, bright color and applying less pencil and more water, you get a very toned down look, which is like in yesterday's card. So these are the watercolor pencils I'm using. I'm gonna keep the layout exactly the same as I did yesterday. I created kind of like vertical, or diagonal, I'm sorry, stripes here, and I'm keeping it the same. You can do any design background that you want. I just wanted to show you the difference side by side on the two cards when I'm done here. So I'm just gonna basically speed this up right here and I'm just scribbling over different colors. Uh, you can choose a few colors, a lot of colors. You can create a rainbow. You can keep, you know, you can keep it in the same color schemes by doing some greens or just blues or whatever you wanna do. It really doesn't matter. It's just whatever your personal taste is. I decided to wanna make a rainbow card. This would be good for a male or female, an adult or child. I kept this very open. I, I mean, I can always use birthday cards. And um, if I'm late, which most of the time I am, I can stamp a fun little belated sentiment on the inside and boom, I've got myself my custom card ready to go. So I've gone ahead and laid down my pencil here. Now, watercolor cardstock usually has two sides, a textured and a smooth. I typically use the smooth side most of the time, depending on what I'm going for. So for this instance, I did use the smooth side. And this is just, uh, look at that. <laughs> That's just a paintbrush with some water. I have water off to the side. I clean my brush each time and remove some of the water and I'm going to get these really vibrant, really intense colors, which is probably why they're called ink tense pencils. Haha. <laughs> so anyway, the more water you use, obviously, like I said, the lighter your color will be. So I'm grabbing some water, cleaning off my brush, and then dabbing some of the water away on that cloth. And then I'm doing that with each new color. 
and it's so pretty. These colors are gorgeous. You really don't have to do a lot with watercoloring. I am not an expert. I'm actually just started playing around with my watercolors because I'm taking the upcoming online card classes watercolor for card makers. So I'm very limited in what I can do with the watercolors because I've never really you know, played around with them too much except for maybe coloring in some stamped images or creating backgrounds like this. So I'm super excited about that class. I encourage you to sign up for it if you haven't and you get lifelong access. So uh, it's really a win-win there. So I'm excited about that. So anyway, that's why I started playing around with backgrounds with the, with the mediums that I have to just kind of prep myself for the class. So that's pretty much it for that card. I'm going to set that aside to dry while I work on the next card. And this is using the Distress Ink Refills. And this is the card I'll be making today. I wanted to keep it uh, with blue and green because I'm making it for a boy. So this is the card from yesterday's video. And I used th three or four different colors on that card. And today I'm just going to do two. Now with the refills, I like to go ahead and wet my card panel first. So that's just me applying some water with a big uh, paintbrush. So my whole entire card base is now wet. You don't have to do this, but I've done this every single time I've used refill, so I don't really know what it would be like to not use it. It just works better for me. So the two colors I'm, I've chosen to use is Mode Lawn, and I just, I <laughs> my brain totally escaped me what that blue is, I'll tell you in a second. But anyway, um, so I'm going to be using the blue, which remain unnamed blue for now, and then Mode Lawn here. And these are just really fun colors I think would be great for boys. And I'm going to, you can see how the puddles are already starting to form there. But the magic comes when you start with, when you apply water. So this is just a Ranger Large Mr. Bottle with water. You can use Perfect Pearls if you want to, if you want that shine look. I just really, really, really sprayed the mess out of that card panel with some water. And you can see all the puddles uh, forming. And you can move the ink around. You can move your card panel around and kind of get the ink flowing. Uh, but the fun thing is the water basically does all the work. It's like the magician here. So each card that you make is going to be unique in its own sense because you can never replicate the same card exactly the same because the water is going to react to the distress inks and create just masterpieces. Now this technique will only work with distress ink refills because distress inks are formulated to react with water. So um, you're not going to get the same look by using other inks. But by all means you can try, but the distress inks is what's really going to make this work for you because of the formulation that it has when it reacts with water. So this is a great card to let dry naturally, which is what I'm going to do, but I am going to blob off some of that color there. If you find that you have too much color in one space, you can use a dry cloth. This is a dry wet wipe from the garbage, and I'm just kind of blotting off some of the ink there, especially around the sentiment. You can also take your finger and do a little finger painting if you want to get more color uh, on parts of your card. It's really whatever you want to do, but for the most part, I'm going to leave the card like that and I'm going to let it dry naturally off to the side while we go ahead and build and, and complete the other card here. So this is the card. We're going to go ahead and pull this all together and finish off this card here. That card panel is nice and dry. It didn't take long at all. And what I'm going to do is I decided I'm going to mount the card panel off to the right hand side of the card, leaving some exposed to the left. But I decided I wanted to bring in some of that black, so I decided I need a little border there. So what I've done is I've lined that up, how it's going to mount onto my card base, and I took a ruler and a pencil and I went ahead and drew a line. That's going to be covered up because I wanted to see where I wanted to apply my tape. Now this is glitter tape from American Crafts. That glitter does not come off. It's awesome. It's got an adhesive on the back and it comes in a variety of colors. And I thought it would be fun to just add a little glitter strip here off to the side to tie into the fun shine of the embossed background. So that's what I'm doing here. And I'm going to, I kind of took that T-squared ruler to help line up my, <laughs> to help line it up for me, but it didn't work. So I pushed it out of the way. But anyway, it was a good thought. So I'm trying to put that uh, on as straight as possible. And like it just covered up that pencil line. I overlapped that pencil line a little bit because the pencil line was actually the edge of the card base. And obviously I wanted the glitter tape to overlap and give me a very thin border. So that's why I did it that way. So I'm using my Glue Glider Pro. Uh, I like this because it's smaller than the ATG gun. And the refills are very inexpensive to purchase. So I like it and it's a great durable adhesive and it works really great and it's a removable cartridge. You can actually have it pull or push. I like it to the pull feature, but if you flip it around and load it in the opposite way, you can push your adhesive out. So that's, it's an interesting tool. So now I'm gonna go ahead and adhere that down. And because we overlapped that uh, glitter tape over the pencil line, I've got this nice thin border of glitter, of black glitter. 
and I just think it ties into the card very nicely. So I'm going to take some scissors and cut off the excess glitter tape. And because I originally trimmed my watercolor panel down too short, I don't know what I was thinking, I need to go ahead and trim down that bottom piece a little bit. So I'm taking my paper trimmer. This is pretty thick cardstock that I'm using, so I'm going to have to trim it twice. So I take my paper trimmer, which I love. It has that wire guide so I know exactly where I'm cutting. And it cut off the top panel just fine, but it didn't cut off the inside panel or the bottom panel. So I'm just going to go ahead and open that up and I can see exactly where I'm cutting with that wire guide and I'll just cut that off. And then we've got this great card here. It will still fit in an A2 envelope. It's um, actually going to be four, five by four and a quarter. So now we're going to go ahead and pull this uh, Distress Ink Refilled Background card together, keeping it pretty simple as well. It's all dried. I love all the blobs of, of watercolor. It is so stinking pretty to me. I just love it. And it's really effortless because the water does all the work for you. So this is just a random piece of blue cardstock. I don't know where it, who it's from. It might be Basil. I'm not sure, but it's kind of like this navy blue. It's not a perfect match to the blue on the card, but that's okay because I'm going to do something around the edges. This is some Mr. Huey white mist, and I actually don't use the little pump thing. I actually just flick it off the stick there because I get better placement of where I want the ink and I'm only focusing on the edges because that's all that's going to show when we pull the card together. So I thought adding these little white flicks would give some fun, fun uh, texture and design to the background, the little bit of background that you're going to see. And it also kind of hides the fact that this is not a perfect match cardstock. Now I could have taken the distress ink that I used and created the perfect match, but I was too lazy. So this is uh, my alternative. <laughs> And I'm going to go ahead and heat set that very quickly with my heat gun so I can go ahead and finish off this card for the video. And then we'll be done. That is a piece of two inch masking tape, by the way, I put to protect the back of my card in case you were wondering. So I've gone ahead and dried that, cleared my work surface, and it's all dry to the touch. Now I can go ahead and hear this uh, card panel down. Now with this, I'm going to be using some foam dimension. I thought it would be a little bit more fun than having it flat on the card. So I'm going to be using this big ginormous roll of double-sided tape. That will last me quite some time. Honest to God, that's bigger than my head, the circumference of my, <laughs> of my head. And I'm going to put a lot of foam adhesive down because we used a lot of water on this card base. It's going to make the cardstock kind of buckle a little bit. So securing it down with a lot of foam adhesive uh, is really going to make sure that that lays nice and smooth for me on my card panel. So I'm going overboard with the foam tape and that's okay because as you can clearly see, I've got enough to go around. <laughs> so I'm going to peel off the backing and go ahead and put that down on the card base and we will be done. And I just think having that really fun flick of white in the background is just super cool. It just ties into the card just nicely. So that's it for that particular card. And I love how the embossed image just stands out. Uh, it's, I just love it. This is, this is really fun. It really is. So here's the two cards that we made today. To the left, ink tints, watercolor pencils, and to the right is the Distress Ink Refills. And here's the ones from yesterday's video. And look at the difference with the ink tints uh, samples. See how the bottom one is so much more vibrant than the top? It's just because I put a lot more water down on the top card than I did on the bottom when I was blending the ink together. So you can really get a lot of different looks with the colors that you use, with the amount of water that you use. Uh, super fun fun to play around with. So I hope I have encouraged you to get out your watercolors and play around. And if you do, please email me a link. I would love to see it. And if you're interested in any of the supplies, they are linked below in the YouTube description and over on my blog with a lot more pictures. Thanks for watching.